All right, welcome to one of the most broken speed games. Do you want me like how are we gonna do timer stuff? Do you want me to, like tell you when to start or? All right. What? Oh, potato was the file name that won. I guess so. That should be the file name. I actually lose a bit of time to have extra characters, but we don't really care too much because it's a marathon run. All right, you ready? All right, three, two, one, start. So, Ganondorf source requirement or GSR is sort of like a, I guess you could sort of describe it as like a legacy any percent category. There's several uh, things that aren't allowed. Like you have to get the items from source. You can't like write items to your inventory and stuff like that. Um, and then you have to beat the game, like, like you have to get to the end of the game through defeating Gandorf, which basically <laughs> means you can't wrong warp there. So you can't do like wrong warp to the end like they do in any percent. And you can't like write items to your inventory and stuff like that. So it's sort of like a don't completely destroy the game category, but we still destroy the game really badly because this game's really broken. Well. I mean, it's not like too broken if you just like played it casually, but there's like, if not, there's probably like if over a thousand tricks, like individually, or at least like different applications of general ideas. So there's a lot of like, this game's basically just an open world game, even though it was sort of designed to be linear, at least for some parts, and like what order you did the dungeons in. But this, in general, in order to beat Ganondorf and complete the game that way, we need to have the light arrows, and we need to have magic to shoot the light arrows. To get the light arrows, because we can't, like, gim them, which is, like, an item manipulation thing, we have to beat Shadow and Spirit, which allows you to watch the light arrow cutscene, which gives you the light arrows. For some reason, they decide to only check if you beat Shadow and Spirit, uh... To like trigger the cutscene because well the reason why it's sh both shadow and spirit is because you can technically do shadow and spirit in any order casually you're supposed to have the hover boots to get the spirit but you can get the hover boots and shadow and then go to spirit so they check both dungeons they didn't check any of the other dungeons before that because you're supposed to need to complete the other three dungeons to like get uh nocturne of shadow which allows you normally to get into spirit, or not spirit, shadow. But there's like several different ways we can get into shadow without that, so it's not really required. So we like don't even have to visit those other dungeons. Well, we will go in to visit some of the other dungeons to get items. Like we'll get bombs from the Dongo's Cavern. And we need to get a bow in order to shoot light arrows, so we'll visit Forest Temple. But the general idea of this route is we're going to go to Spirit and Shadow and then we're going to get the bow and we're going to complete the game through defeating Ganondorf. So starting off, like, I'm going to skip getting the sword because I just, you know, it, it takes a little bit of time to get the sword. And also there's a specific trick that I'm going to do later that requires that I don't have a sword equipped. So we're going to do a rupee route here to collect some rupees. And I want to get 35 so I can buy some nuts and two sticks from the shop. Going to rob this dude's house. Well, he's trying to pick up rocks outside. You may be wondering why do we need sticks and nuts. Well, we're going to use the sticks to escape the forest right away. And then we're going to use the nuts and bottom of the well to get bomb juice. But I'll explain that when I get there. Also, if you have any like questions you can ask, I am looking at chat when I can. 
just like in general about the run or OTSP running. So here I'm going to do a recoil off the stone and then store the speed from the recoil. I'll explain this more in a second. So there, I did a recoil off that, and uh, so when you jump slash something, you recoil. I obviously lost a stick there because it broke, but and then I entered water, and then like surfaced out of the water. And if you're holding ESS position while you do that, which is like just a slight input on the controller, so like in any direction, like when you do this when you're not like standing still, Link will just like turn in place. And it so happens that when Link is like doing this turn in place, he his speed just like isn't like calculated, I guess. So he just like if he has backward speed, he keeps going backwards. Um, so there we get the backward speed and then we take it over to the dude. And while you're like talking to him, he doesn't have like the same sort of collision. So you can just like kind of go through him if you work it out right which is what I did there. And then we just like kind of roll under him because he like pops up on the side there because it's like slanted or whatever. He actually guards in like a circle, which is like kind of funny because like in normal gameplay, you're only supposed to like have him do like a half circle. But like he in reality guards like a full circle. Yeah, this category used to be named No Iron Wrong Warp. Like a couple months ago. The main reason for that change was like, uh, we don't also allow cutscene skips in this category. And so it was kind of weird. Because, like, cutscene skips are like debatably a form of wrong work, but not really. Oh, I, I said yes to the owl, so he talked to me again. So here we're making our way to Kakariko, so we can go to Bottom the Well to get bomb chews. And you might be asking, what do you mean go to Bottom the Well? I thought that was like part of the end game sequence. Well, it turns out this game's very broken. And the the way we're gonna get to Bottom the Well is that water doesn't really exist while you're in a cutscene. So we're gonna start a cutscene and backflip into the wall at the same time. And the water won't stop us because we're in a cutscene. Oh, and I'm doing another like water extended speed thing here. The purpose for this one is a little bit different than like going fast, because that wasn't like much faster than any normal movement. But while you're also doing like that ESS turn thing with a slight uh, input, owls just like don't talk to you because I guess they figure you're busy or something. So like if you store some speed, even if it's not like faster than walking, you can skip that owl there. So it ends up saving time. So here I'm going to get the chicken mad to start a cutscene and then backflip and I'm going to go straight through the water. And then all those chicken friends are going to come flying after me. Oh, we didn't. Oh, we saw like one for like a frame or two. So here, I'm going to do something where I store properties of a crawl space. It's going to allow me to do a lot of weird things. So I try to enter a crawl space, and then I interrupt it on the next frame by throwing a nut. And so that gives you like some really weird properties. You can like backflip midair and like side hop midair, which I utilize there. And then also, uh, you can like do that clip. The state was canceled like after I side up midair. There after clipping, because I landed on a slope which cancels this like glitch. Water extends. But in general, the reason why that clip works is because of like the properties where like Link's sort of on the floor, like even when he's not. Like that allows you to backflip there. Because you kind of the reason like why the clip works at all is when you land from a jump slash in this game, for some reason, like they kind of 
I guess they sort of messed up with how you land. So you end up with getting like a large displacement, like the frame you land. So it's enough to clip like a lot of things, like including that. But like normally you can't clip out there without the storing the crawl space because you won't uh, like they won't be floor on the other side. And the game is like you're swinging a sword, so you can't go where there isn't floor. Which will matter more later, but like you can't like fall off things while you're swinging a sword or stick. I'm taking some damage here so I can kill myself later. Just skip a cutscene. The classic. Collecting some rupees here too, so I can buy a shield. Because we need the adult shield. So yeah, the reason why we got the nuts was for that crawl space stuff. I could have done like a different method of entering bottom of the well if I wanted to, but I need the nuts anyway to get the chews. Ah, I tried to do another owl skip there, but this time like utilizing uh, the fact that like the owls won't talk to you while you're like pulling things out. Or like, but I ended up messing it up. I think it was a little bit to the right. It's not a big deal though, because it like hardly saves time. So here I'm gonna walk be on a seam, which is like the edge between two walls. That is like kind of not completely sloped. So you can just kind of walk up it if you have a good angle and position and go slowly enough. We use it a couple times more. There's a lot of scenes you can walk up, but you can't walk up like every corner between walls, but you can walk up a fair amount. So here I'm going to do a damage boost here, so I don't have to wake this guy up and move these boxes. Nice. So now I'm going to Zelda. The reason why we're going to Zelda is we need Zelda's lullaby to learn magic, so we need to talk to Zelda. Ah. I thought he was facing the other way. That's alright though, because the boxes are moved now. Because the game, like, I don't know, I guess it assumes that it, you must have moved the boxes. So, it just like, kind of puts them there. Guards can be kind of annoying, because how they move is like, sort of random. They can't catch you if you're like frame perfectly side upping, but obviously that's pretty hard to do for like the length of the screen. I'm pretty sure that guy caught me though. But he wasn't able to like complete catching me because I didn't stop side upping. Yeah, the guards are like probably the biggest reset point of the run if I'm like doing like runs for like a PB. Oh, I messed up the text. Yeah, it was pretty good RNG for the last guy. I've actually been getting pretty good RNG on that guy a lot. Like, really, like, I don't know why. I guess he just likes me now. So, in general, we're just getting this for magic. If I mess stuff up, I technically use it to get through spirit, but I shouldn't... If I, like... There's other ways to get around that that hopefully I'll get. In general, I'm going to be doing, like, all the normal well, strats I would do in a run. Uh, also, like, my estimate's a little bit weird, because it's... They said, like, to improve the credits time, and the credits are, like, 10 minutes in this game. So, I hope to finish by, like, 125-ish, but I guess we'll see. Uh, 
Uh, the biggest thing, like, in the child section is just, like, we need to get explosives so we can, like, kind of open up a lot of stuff as a doll. It's kind of, like, the big, like, breaking point. Like, getting explosives early is kind of, like, where the game starts to open up. Uh, as an adult, we're going to get bombs pretty quickly. And then we're going to use those for most of the run. Because, like, bombs are refillable. And, like, other categories, you can uh, get more choose through, like, doing RBA, which is, like, an inventory editing glitch. But we don't allow that in this category. So we sort of just have, like, these ten choose, and we just sort of had to stick with it. I guess I can talk about names. So, like, every character in this game takes, like, one frame to print at, like, 20 FPS. So, like, every, like, extra character you have in your name ends up being, like, an extra frame every time your name's said. So, I think it works out to, like, around 20 times your name said throughout the run. So, it's not, like, a huge thing, but it definitely adds up having more than one character. So here I'm going to start sidewalking at a specific time in order so that I die like while I enter this cutscene. And the reason why this works and actually gives me the song is it actually gives you this like Zelda's lullaby at the start of this cutscene. It does that for all, almost all the warp songs or like songs in general cutscene. So like now that I've already watched it, I can just like talk to her to leave. Because the game like thinks I fully watched the cutscene, because I started it, and I have Zelda's lullaby now. So here we're gonna go buy the shield, because we're gonna need this as adult, and we're just gonna go straight to adult. In theory, there would be a door in the way, but they didn't exactly program this game well, so we can just go through the door. With a good side op. So we're just gonna like bypass all the trial dungeons. Technically we'll visit DC later because we want bombs. But other than that, that's the only trial dungeon we'll visit. So now I'm gonna do a little bit of setup here. Ah. Ah. Alright. That sucks. This is alright though. I ended up failing it. I went over by one frame. So there I like messed up my first setup and I had to do a different setup. But then I just messed up the trick as well. But yeah. We do a lot of setups in this game. There we go. So there what's actually happening is I'm like side upping out of bounds. But the reason why I didn't fall out of bounds like I did the first time when I failed it is you actually want to retarget. You like target the side of the door on a frame. Which you're like, why does that matter? But actually when you target things in this game, your momentum like transfers into the direction you targeted. So because I target the side of the door, like I start like moving into the door. And that's like sort of keeps me like half in bounds. And then I can hold left to get to the other side. In general, I would say the run gets a lot more broken after we become adult. Where we just kind of like we kind of do a little bit of setup and then we do shadow and spirit. And then forest. That's sort of the line, the plan. We're gonna like go get bombs, go get magic, go get minuet so we can get to forest later. And then we're gonna go to shadow. Because, like, in general, when you're adult, the game's sort of like open world, but there's supposed to be limitations, like. 
you aren't supposed to get the shadow until you beat the other three dungeons. But you can basically go anywhere and do anything in this game. Like, there's even like a category that like some people run, which is like doing the dungeons in reverse order. So like you start with spirit and then you do shadow and like go backwards like that. So it's like you can almost do anything. And then like the last dungeon you complete in that category is Deku Tree. But yeah, in order to get to the end of the game through defeating Gandorf, we need to get Shadow and Spirit. Because actually, like, having the Shadow and Spirit medallions is what triggers the cutscene. And that cutscene gives us the light arrows. So yeah, like... Almost all the work we do in this category is just like to get magic and the light arrows and a bow, I guess. Those are basically the requirements we need to complete the game. And the whole run's like getting those and then beating the game. I always thought it was weird that he gives you one of the medallions which you normally get for beating the dungeons. I guess it's just to give you like a taste of what's to come. Yeah, and also somehow Gandorf also knows Dot Skip because he managed to get through the door of time too. in order to steal the Triforce. The plot's normally like you open the door of time and then he gets to go to the spirit realm. But the lore gets a little bit complicated when you do that skip. Also, it's a bit interesting because like you can't see the door there, but it's still like the door is actually still there. It just you can't see it because we're not because it's like a loading plane there and the door would load when we walk over there. So after this cutscene, we actually have to save for it to get out. Because there's no, like, easy way without other items to, like, reverse dot skip as adult. You can do it with hover boots pretty easily, but... So yeah, now we're going to head up to DC to grab some bombs. We get to see the ruined market. Unfortunately, I guess it's already taken me seven years to get to this point, so... I don't think this run's going to PB, Kappa. Because it's like supposedly a seven year difference, I think, from child to adult. Also, in general, it's a little bit interesting because Hyrule Field, as child, there's like monsters and stuff in it. But then once Gen is taken over, like all the monsters are gone and there's like fences and stuff in Hyrule Field. It's kind of funny. Normally, I would do a Hess here, but I'm actually going to skip that for this. It only saves like a couple of seconds, like uh, 10 seconds, I think. And I want to have the extra chew in case I fail something coming up. So I am going to do like a hover up here to bombs instead of going through the temple normally. I can go through the temple normally, and I will if I mess up this hover, but I'm going to go for this. It only saves about 30 seconds, but it's pretty cool, so I want to do it. 
I'm going to use like the property we talked about earlier with like you slashing you can't fall off things or like sort of fall in general. So I'm going to get what's called like infinite sword glitch or ISG, which like is sort of a state where your sword's always swinging. We're going to do this by interrupting a crouch stab by talking to Navi. And when we're in this state and we shield an explosive midair, we're just going to sort of hover there. Because the game doesn't want us to fall. Because it thinks we're like on the ground, I guess. So I'm going to do some hovers here with bomb chews. The goal of this is to get on this head here, and then we can get from there up to bombs. Oh, I had something weird happen. I noticed one of the shoes looked really weird. Well, this might... Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, I managed to save it. I guess I'm glad I had that extra chew. So normally that would only take six chews, but something really weird happened that I've never seen before on that hover. Where one of the bombs was like twisted by the floor below it, or like the floor below it can sometimes influence the explosives, but I've never had that happen here. Or I think that's what happened at least. So one of my hovers was really weird, and then I ended up in a different spot than normal. So I had to kind of wing that last hover there, but we got there. And so we got the bombs. So I could have went through the temple normally, but that's for boring people. Ah, I should have held, I was trying to like, hold too far to the right there, so I didn't actually roll when I landed. So now we got some bombs. And that's pretty much what we're going to use for the rest of the run in terms of explosives. So I'm going to do a trick that's sort of like the West we did to escape the forest, but it's going to involve like speed from a bomb. Instead of like getting the, the speed from like having high speed and then going to water, we're going to get it from shielding explosive during like roll invincibility. It's like while you're rolling in this game, you have some frames of invincibility. If you're like inside an explosive and you shield while holding ESS position, then like you can get speed backwards and just kind of preserve it with the ESS position. This will look close, but there's like a certain spot on the wall where you know He's not able to catch you if you start walking up. Even though it looks kind of scary. So that, like, we call it a hess when you do the speed extending with the bomb. That's a little bit faster than, like, the recoil water extended stuff I was doing earlier. It's like, yeah, it's a little bit faster. It's... In general, a Hess is like about double the speed of a backwalk. So it ends up saving quite a bit of time just like Hessing a lot of places. It's never like a huge amount of time, but over long distances, it can really add up. So here we're getting magic. And we're having the definitely almost PG scene. Probably the weirdest part about this game is the great fairy cutscenes. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to head over to get Minuet so we can go to Forest later. So the reason why we're just getting Minuet and not going to Forest first 
It's like one, it's kind of convenient to have hover boots in forest. We can, we could go without if we wanted to. But in general, it's actually just a little bit faster to go to it later. Because you're like, after you skip the cutscene, because we're going to skip it with dying again, like we did with the CL earlier. And you're going to end up on like the other side of the area. And it's just more convenient to come back later because you play the song and you're right by the dungeon. You can't really skip the trigger for the song. Like, you can't really get around it. So you have to like learn the song at some point. Unless you were to like wrong warp into forest or something, which isn't allowed in this category anyway. So here we're gonna do a little bit of a setup. I'm gonna line up against this guy's backside and then just get back walk with a bob and it'll explode perfectly at the right time to kill me the frame I entered the cutscene. So here I'm just gonna save and don't continue. Which will put me back in Temple of Time. After I start the file again. Yeah, Wasteland has saves about 30 seconds. From what I know. And like... That is a pretty significant amount, but I think overall the run, if you didn't do like any Hesses, it'd probably be like three or four minutes. So I get, that's kind of big relatively, but it's not like insane. So here we're going to go for some bomb drops up here. There's some safety stuff I can do to get the bombs that's guaranteed if I don't get lucky. But it's pretty good odds to get bomb drops here. It's like 50% that the bomb patch drops at least one bomb. And it's like 20% to drop at least two or something like that. Because it's like 1 in 16 for each individual patch. Nice. Ah. The first bonk. So there we interrupt the grave pulling animation with getting hit by the Poe, which sort of just like breaks you out of it, but the grave still keeps getting pulled. So we can just like enter the grave while it's still opening. So how damp Faith throws the flames here is random. And sometimes they're really hard to dodge like that. This will probably be a pretty slow damp because I had to like really hard dodge one flame and then I get hit by another one. Yeah, 50 flat or 51 is a pretty good guess. Nope. Yeah, I had to like kind of walk around that one flame there, so I didn't have like fully the fastest speed after I jump slashed up there. Yeah, at least I don't have to do the other kind of DFA, yeah, that's true. So here we're gonna go into the next area and then like quickly side out back. What this does is it'll avoid us out because it thinks we like lost the race basically. It's like, oh, Dampe closed the door on you and you fell behind. So we're just gonna bring him back to the beginning. So here we're gonna do something we call a hookshot jump. Basically, if you interrupt the hookshot at a good time, like as it connects with something. Ah. Yep. 
you'll just get like jumped up by it like that. Actually, not 100% sure on the full explanation of why when you interrupt it, it works like that. But you're getting like speed forward, and then the game apparently uses a different coordinate system when hookshotting. And then when, when it transfers like back into the normal coordinate system when you interrupt the hookshot, it like gives you vertical speed for some reason. Yeah, I found that method for doing hookshot jumps. We'll do a different hookshot jump later that uses a different method of interrupting the hookshot. And that one gets more height because you can actually aim up, which affects how much height you gain. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. So here we're going to get the hover boots in Dead Hand's room. Oh, sometimes you get it where, like, the music is really quiet. It's actually really interesting. We don't really know why, what causes that exactly, but it happens sometimes where, like, the music is really, really quiet like that. It's, like, pretty rare. It's, like, maybe, like, 1 in 50. So this run's already pretty, really crazy. I've seen something I've never seen before in the DC Helper. And we got the low music, which isn't that crazy. So here we're going to do something fancy. I'll explain in a second. All right, so the loading zone for bosses is like always there. You just kind of like open the boss door and then walk into the loading zone, which is like always there. Ah. And then, so we're, what we do there is we do a super slide, which is like we use Hess from a bomb. This is like sort of the same idea. It's the same speed as a Hess. But instead of like using ESS to like keep the speed, we're like interrupting our grab animation because like we roll into the bomb, grab it, and then we get hit by a bomb at the same time as we're grabbing it. And that sort of just like kind of messes up the game. Because I guess maybe because you move really far from the thing you're grabbing or something like that. And it gives you like speed backwards. And then as long as you're holding R, you keep that speed. And then. But that's like that speed alone isn't enough to clip there. We need some additional speed, like just the super slide isn't enough. So we also drop another bomb like behind me. So I dropped three bombs there. Like two of them were just for the super slide. Like I grab one and I get pushed by the other one. You can do super slides with one bomb too, but it's more precise and it's just easier in this case to like make it set up with two bombs. There is a setup for one, but... And then we use, like, the third bomb we dropped to give us, like, extra speed. Because bombs can, like, actually push you when you interact with them. So, it, and it, if you, like, line it up just right, the bombs actually give you a really high amount of speed. Yeah, N64 is... A little bit faster in this category. I don't know if it's about 40 seconds. It's between 20 and 40 seconds, though. Yeah, I mean, Ganon lists, GSR, and like sort of all dungeons are still faster on N64. Though all dungeons might change a lot now that we got like SRM chest editing and like Ace and stuff. All Dungeons is in like a state of the routes probably get a change due to like Ace and stuff. All right, here we're gonna save warp to go back to Temple of Time because that's a little bit faster than walking. Yeah, Hundo is like really different on 64 versus BC.
So here, now we're gonna do a spirit, now that we completed Shadow. I mean, technically we could've went to spirit first, but it's really convenient to have the hover boots in spirit. And like, it's kinda out of the way, so. This is one of the houses that is quite big in terms of like distance covered. I kind of want to avoid going close to Lon Lon Ranch here because it actually freezes time of day. So I take a little bit of like a weird route with my Hess because I don't want to go near Lon Lon Ranch. The reason why I worry about time of day is I'm going to use the Skull Shell for something. So I want it to be nighttime. And if it freezes time of day and I did like all the movement optimally, then I could get to the Skull a little bit before it turns night. So here you normally need a Pona to cross the ridge. There's a couple of ways we could do it, but here we're just going to do a Hess and equip our roots. So here, I swear I could do another trick that I was actually the one that found, or at least the general idea, not this specific setup. But when you're coming out of like a hover, like sort of like the ones we did from DC, your speed's actually really high in the downwards direction. Like you max out your downward speed while you're in one of these hovers. So we're gonna like snap back from a hover. I guess I'll just do it. And I'll talk about it. Alright. So we're gonna get hit by the bomb as we land from a hover. And this gives us like speed into the gate and downwards. And because the floor is a little bit slanted. If you have a good setup, you can like clip there. You can sort of do that with almost any floor that's slanted. And then some flat floors, if they have certain properties. We'll use that later in Spirit for the Bosky skip. Only that one's a flat floor and just has properties that allow it. Like the property specifically is like it lets you move while you have high downward speed. Cause some floors like stick you still when you have high downward speed so it doesn't work there so here we're going to use we're going to do something like called token delay which is where we like delay picking up a gold sculpture token So if you press Ocarina, I'm doing another seam walk here. But this one's a little bit hard because I have to like manually line it up. So if you press Ocarina in the air, you won't pick up the gold sculpture token until you land. And then if the token unloads before you land, you won't pick it up at all until you look at it again basically. So we're going to look at it as we hookshot something to interrupt our hookshot. And I messed it up, but we're fine. I was aiming too low. Alright. I'm glad I didn't mess it up. Enough to fail it. So yeah, this jump could have jumps a little bit higher. Ooh, that's not very good. Alright, we're good. That was a bit scary. I wanted to be a little bit more to the left there, 
But I turned around a little bit fast in my super slide. So I didn't get quite get the distance I wanted, but I still managed to make it work. Oh, and I failed this. Let me see if I can save this. Oh, no. All right. We got to do spirit normally. Oh, that's sad. I, I got like a weird uh, super slime. You get to see this strat I actually came up with earlier today, though. Well, I didn't come up with like this specific strat, but I came up with a setup for it earlier today. Ah. So what I'm trying to do is you can grab this block instead of, because we don't have actually have strength, you can't like push the block. But I can still grab it, the top of it, in order to advance without pushing it. Ah. Oh. Bear with me for a moment. I don't do this trick as often as the other tricks in the run, so it might take me a second. I have a couple other things I can do if for some reason I can't get this. There's a couple of options to skip this. This should work. What? Right, I'll do this once more and then I'll try something else. It's not too hard. I feel like that last one should have worked. So normally we would have like already gotten mirror shield there and we like skip most of the dungeon. All right, I'll do this other stuff. Actually, I'm going to get some bombs here. These guys have a 50 50 chance of dropping bombs. So actually the trick I was doing to get to mirror shield is a little bit more risky than some of the other stuff. There's a hover you can do if you have other choose, but I use them all for DC hover. All right. So this is my other strat. I'm gonna do a clip here with a Hess. I don't know why that strat I tried initially didn't work. But yeah, I wanna just grab the top of that block and then I can just roll into this area. But that works too. So now I'm going to collect these rupees to get a small key. Basically, we're just going to go through the temple to get to Mirror Shield, and then the run basically resumes as normal. Yeah, I think that's what happened too. I got like knocked out of the super slide. It was a bit weird. It may have worked if I didn't equip Hover Boots as soon as I did. Managed not to get eaten by that guy. Well, I got that fast hook shot too. It's kind of hard to get that hook shot where you go immediately to the top. Often you'll like grab the thing and have to climb up a little bit. If you do it just right, you can get the hook shot all the way to the top. I actually didn't even know you could get it all the way to the top. I've never seen that before, but I don't go this way often. One benefit about going through Spirit is we're going to do, like, normally we do, like, some of this stuff. There's, like, a specific, like, room with, like, I don't know, I'll... I'll mention it when we get there. It's like there's like floaty dudes that you have to burn in fire. We would do that room anyway. Even if we had gotten, not failed the trick. So there's a little bit of like non-wasted time. So I'm trying to back up onto this. 
because then I can hook shut to this chest instead of like walking up the other side and jumping down into the other hand. We get to see all this extra content of this dungeon. I think doing, uh, not doing like, we call it spear jump, that hook shot, uh, the token jump thing. Like failing that and like doing the inside of spirit is like three to four minutes or something like that. So it's not like an insane amount. So I have to move in a specific way in order to like lure these guys into the fire because they sort of mimic your movements. Oh, I was slow. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to fall there. So here you lure this guy to hit that switch and open the door for you. See, and then normally we would enter this room after getting Mirror Shield, but we're coming in from the other direction. Oh god. That's actually really bad. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I, that was actually surprising that it killed me. Usually I have actually one more hit on him, but I messed up. And also, like, I should have been in a spot where I wasn't going to get hit. Well, it's not too bad. A lot of the stuff we don't have to redo. Because, like, this door is already open and we don't have to, like, play CL again to get the key. Ah. Oh, well. Yeah, this isn't too bad. It's a bit better to side up up these stairs than walk up them. Because, in general, when you're going up or down steep slopes, side-ups are better. Mostly just for up, because side-up is like... It gets slowed down a little bit, technically. Because you're just like slower on the flame... On the frame you land from the side-up. Also, that's an interesting quirk. That the switch is already pressed when you come back, because it was pressed when you left the room. That's what was supposed to happen there. The reason why I was surprised I died is there's generally like a spot like just to their left that you can like, or I guess you are right when you're facing them, but it's like their left that you can just like s sit on their foot there and they can't hit you. So there we go. We got the mirror shield. Kind of sad that I messed up the last part of that spirit jump. But I guess it's actually not that bad. Because you got to see the trick. And then you also got to see the inside of spirit. Bonus content. So I'm going to go for some bombs here. Oh. Normally I like have to equip Mirror Shield up there because I'm like unequipping Hover Boots from the Super Slide. I guess I forgot to equip it because I wasn't unequipping Hover Boots. I got, wow, I got actually four bomb drops there. That's pretty lucky even though I don't need them. It's, uh, it's a half chance for each. Oh, <laughs> normally I would do the room now, but because I failed it, the because I failed uh, Spirit Jump, I've already done that room. 
So that's why I hit the switch. So here we're gonna get ISG, just so it's easier to walk up this arm. And we're gonna do like a little clip here to get on top of the shoulder. Oh. This kind of randomly fails. It's actually really weird. I feel like I've had like everything that's like sometimes randomly failed has gone wrong this run. But I guess that's the nature of a marathon run. I think it's because of your exact position on this. Like every once in a blue moon, it'll fail. But it's actually pretty unlikely. So we're gonna do a little bit of climbing right here. Now we're gonna hook shot the grate that's inside of this just to get up to this door. And then we don't have the boss key, but we can just like go through the door. Because we're all powerful gods. So there, that's the same idea as the gate skip. As the gate skip we did to like get into the wasteland in Grotto's Fortress. Six out of six for spirit bomb drops. Yeah, I got bomb drops from the grass too. Yeah, there's a couple different ways to do it. There's a way where you like go up top and you do like a super slide into the loading zone. Kind of similar to the shadow BK skip. That like the way we got to the shadow boss. So that's what I meant when you can stand right by his foot and he can't hit you. Here we're gonna do a cutscene skip by killing him as we fall out of bounds. It saves a little bit of time. But it's not like a huge amount. I think it's like 10 to 15. Usually this is one of the places where like you can lose the most time if you end up like killing yourself. But actually it wouldn't be that bad because I've already done the inside of the spirit. Oh yeah, I should explain how I clipped there. Um, when there's a hookshotable thing that's like really close to the wall, if you hookshot it like while you're facing the wall, you end up just like... I guess the hookshot like kind of thinks it connects past the wall and then you just go through the wall or something like that. But in general, like, if you have a hookshot of a thing near a wall, then in you hookshot it facing the wall, you'll just clip through. And he happens to be hookshotable for some reason. Or I guess it's the she. So here this fight's a little bit RNG, but there's a lot of things we can do to make it better. But if they just, like, don't shoot, then we're kind of screwed. Alright, the blue guy's gonna shoot. If you, they fly over the outer platforms, they're guaranteed to shoot. So you can hookshot them and it makes them like spin, and you can use that to manipulate the positions pretty well. Alright, that guy's gonna shoot. Ah, uh, okay. Managed to get that barely. Oh, nice. Double. So that, like, he decided to, like, shoot right away instead of moving. Or, like, he gets he decided to move to the same spot again. Alright, that guy's gonna shoot. So I hope shut them there, because it, like, sort of, like, stops what they're doing, and they'll, like, move quicker that way. Because, like, he's not in a good position for me, so I just want to hook down to make him move.
In theory, you can get, like, screwed if they decide to, like, stay on the absolute opposite side of the arena, but it's pretty rare. So here we're gonna hookshot them, like, before we shield their attack. I wasn't sure I'd already done Jump Slash, so I decided to throw one again. This is one thing I haven't talked about. Is that crouch jabs are actually really broken in this game, in the sense that I guess they forgot to program how much damage crouch jabs should do. So they just do whatever damage your last attack was, or if they it's like your first attack upon loading in the area, it just does one. So if you, if you Jump Slash and then Crouch Stab, it does four damage. Whereas like a normal slash is like two damage. So you can use that. And then that's the same damage ISG would do if you get ISG from doing a crouch stab. Yeah, kind of sounds like I hate him, or as people like to say, my anus. So I'm going to get this heart. This is definitely a heart I normally wouldn't get in runs, but... Having extra hearts is, like, pretty beneficial, even if I don't make any more mistakes. Because I can get... Because there's some RNG elements right at the end of the run with like falling rocks that can spawn randomly and they can fall on me and screw me up and make me lose HP. But if I have extra, more, like more health, I'm less likely to get like, I'll lose less time if it messes me up. So now we've completed Shadow and Spirit. So we could go get the light arrows if we wanted to, but we also need the bow to shoot the light arrows because we can't shoot light arrows without a quiver technically a lot of times in other speed runs you'll see like people get a glitch quiver from rba and use that to shoot arrows without actually having the bow but since we can't do rba because we have to get things from source we have to actually get the bow Even though, like, technically what we need is not the bow, it's just the quiver that you get with the bow that allows you to hold arrows and shoot them. I don't I don't see how crouch stabs could be intended. It just seems like they probably forgot to set a damage value for crouch stabs, which is why it just does whatever the last attack was. It seems a bit weird that as a game mechanic, you'd have an attack that does whatever damage your last attack did. It doesn't seem to make much sense. All right, I'm not, let's just pause. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you could definitely argue that is a fine name. I mean, in general, the category name when it was changed from No I'm Wrong was voted on, and this is kind of what was decided. Personally, if I was a side name, I guess it would have gone with something like, like some sort of, like you know. It's any percent, but with extra restriction. But the name that it is aside isn't totally bad either. I mean, essentially, like light arrow source requirement and Gandor source prime would almost be the same thing. Except the idea is more like Gandorf comma source requirement because you beat Gandorf and things are source requirement. So I was gonna do a slash while he was dropping down. And then, like, roll under him. But I mistimed the slash a little bit, so I just hookshotted him to kill him.
Yeah, it's true. You can also get the medallions through RVA and then watch the cutscene that way. Because actually, the only thing the game checks for is whether or not you have the medallions and not if you actually completed the dungeons. So stuff will find are a bit interesting. Like, there's RNG involved, but a lot of it is, like, manipulable or, like, you can play around. Sometimes they can be really mean to you, but... That wasn't too bad. Like, there's, like, one thing they can do where they walk around with, like, their shield really up, which is, like, kind of you can't do much about, but... Almost everything else, you can just like keep chain stabbing them, and as long as you don't like mess with the timing, they can't really break out of it. We need to do that fight in order to get a small key, because we need to open some locked doors. Here, we're going to do something called a ledge clip, which is where you target a wall as you grab something. Which kind of confuses Link about which way he's supposed to be facing, I guess. Like, he tries to... Like, he normally, like, faces, you know, away from the ledge or whatever. But when you target something, he faces towards that and it messes him up. So I guess you end up grabbing the ledge, like, the wrong way. And then you're just on the other side. So there we did something called, I said, damage boost jump. I don't know what its official name would be. But basically we got speed from getting hit by a bomb. The same sort of speed we used to like pass and stuff. And then we jumped on like the frame after we got the speed. So we got like a high speed jump. And the first frame of the jump, we equipped it hover boots. Because normally while you're in the air and like you have more speed than like what's a normal jumping speed, the game will like cut you down to size and slow you back down after like one frame. But if we equip hover boots, it doesn't do that. So there we did what's called like a ground jump, which is like you try to pick up a bomb, but then you hold R. So you're like stuck sort of in the bomb picking up animation and then it hits you out of it. And you get in like sort of a weird state where you're still like kind of trying to pick up the bomb. And if you do a backflip, it like interrupts it and you just like get the height so it's sort of like a jump option even though there's no like jump button in the game but you can do a ground jump to get like an actual jump whereas like normally you can only jump while you walk off ledges so here we got another style post fight I'm going to use the nuts here because it makes it a little bit cleaner, this fight. Wow. I definitely should have been able to hit him there. He was like doing the, he was like walking around with his shield up and he was like, Sometimes they like hold it poorly, I guess. I don't really know why, but like, he's like not properly blocking himself. How long have I been running No Iron Armor? Um, I guess it depends on like what you mean by how long. Like, I guess the first time I ran No Iron Armor was like a year and a half ago. I've been running OT for roughly about three years now, though not like running it the whole time. Like, I was doing just, like, a lot of, like, glitch stuff, like, mess around with that and, like, other things instead of running. And I haven't been doing it continuously, but I've been doing it a fair amount. So we're going to go to Temple of Time, which triggers the light arrow cutscene now. Yeah, I've, like, I guess, no, I'm wrong, more, probably, like, I've been running it more seriously for, like, six to seven months or so. And I was doing all dungeons before that, yeah. This is jump on with SRM. <laughs> I 
But yeah, I've been streaming like slightly less lately because I've been like finishing up this semester in school. My goal time is probably like little, like mid one thirteen probably. So, like my time right now is fifteen oh three. And then, like, world record is, like, 14, 13. In all dungeons, like, I'm kind of, like, stepping back from all dungeons for a little bit. Because I think the route's going to be, like, totally different with SRAM and Ace. So, like, I, I sort of just, like, am letting that develop. And then I'm going to run it whenever we come up with a good route for that. That, like, involves that stuff. But my goal time for all dungeons, like, I guess without new route stuff would maybe be like 118 or something. Yeah, I think the ZL SRM stuff. Because you can get like Zelda's letter in like a chest with SRM and then like Gimmit to get like all the items in the game basically. It's a bit like a glossing over, but... You can look up some stuff. There's like videos on YouTube about it. Technically, I guess it would be allowed, but it's not going to be allowed once we work out changing the rules. I mean, like, it wouldn't be allowed in this category either. I mean, technically, Gim already wouldn't be allowed in this category, but. You like how the controller thinks a face. Yeah, like, it'll probably be- it'll obviously matter for 100% no source requirement. I'm not sure how much it will change 100%. Like, with source requirement. So yeah, we have everything we need to complete the game now. We have magic, we have light arrows, and that's basically all we need. Technically, like, watching this cutscene allows, like, a, a bridge to spawn that you use to get to the end, but you could also just hover. Yep, we're going to kill Ganondorf now. Just after we finish this cutscene. We just still got like another few minutes left in it. Oh, I also missed warning about spoilers of Sheik turning into Zelda. I'm sorry if you get spoiled about this game that's actually older than me by like a month. <laughs> hey, do we have a moment? Yeah, if you want to be a donation. Uh, not donation, but more of a schedule update. Unfortunately, um, as you all know, Slower Demon is organizing this marathon. Uh, however, some apparently some like family stuff caught on, and Slower will not be able to do his cross-code NG run. Um, there was an incentive for that one to do a bonus NG plus um, any percent run. Uh, that will have to get be moved towards the end of the marathon. Uh, we will be moving uh, Child of Eden up uh, to that slot, and during the Child of Eden run, we will try to find a uh, backup 40-45 minutes of the supposed any percent NG run. Just figured that out on screen. Thank you. Alright. Thank you. You came out before this, your, this game did? Yeah, I was born like December 3rd, 1998, and this game came out like November 13th or something. Or November 20th, like something in the 20s maybe. So I was like born a week or two after this game come out, came out. Sorry if that makes you feel like a boomer, Kappa.
So yeah, Lido cutscenes, like, it's actually not too annoying, because, like, the amount of runs that actually gets a light arrow cutscene, at least for me, because I usually don't finish runs unless, like, it's good at PB. Though sometimes I do. Like, so I don't have to watch light arrow cutscene that much. The more annoying cutscene for me is, like, the Master Sword cutscene, or, like, the Zelda cutscene. I failed. I actually got Spirit Jump, but I. I got like a really weird failure on the super slide after spirit jump. And I also died to the knuckle after going through spear. <laughs> that was really, that was also a little bit weird. I, like messed it up because I was coming from the other side instead of coming out the door normally. Yeah, I'm just going to do this strat. I can do like a hover up too, so... For some reason, they put a loading zone on this floor here. I don't know why. Don't ask me. But yeah, there's a loading zone to the next area just sitting there. So like the way loading zone works is like floors are tagged to be loading zones. And then if you're over a floor that's tagged to be a loading zone, you load into the next area. And so that like wall basically that kind of slopes up is just tagged to be a loading zone. All right. Okay, I'll just do this. I can't quit spin, apparently. Normally I charge a quick spin, but I get distracted talking. Alright, that's not too bad. So yeah, normally that's way better. But yeah. Yeah, for some reason they put a loading zone over that floor. Oh, actually, I should save. Not for like any reason, like I might die. But if the game crashed, it'd be pretty sad. Because I'd have to watch Light Arrow cutscene again. <laughs> oh wait. I almost skipped this. That would have been interesting. Yeah, I mean, you could skip the knuckle, but then, like, you have to kill it on the way back anyway. Low health doesn't actually even matter that much anymore, because these guys one-shot me anyway. Well, I guess with five hearts, they don't. Hmm. Oh, wow. That went a bit weird. One of my stabs didn't hit the guy on the left, so I had to roll out, and then when I went back in, my stab didn't hit the guy on the right. And I just hit him, like, as, uh, which, like, interrupted his swing, but I, like, died on the same frame. So if I had, like, stabbed one frame faster, I wouldn't have died there. That's okay. This is why the estimate was, like, what it was. Well, I guess 125, but actually 136 because of the credits. I also haven't been doing too many runs actually recently because I've been finishing my finals. But I managed to do like quite a bit of practice today. But yeah, I did the stab a little bit early, which is why I didn't hit one of them, and why I messed up the first time. And then the second, like the time when I went back in, it didn't hit the guy on the right. It was just because my position was a little bit off. You can do those one at a time too, but doing them together is obviously faster. Ah. I was gonna try and do a house there. That house is a little bit weird, because it's like... It's not even like a slope, it's like stairs. So it's like pretty unique.
I mean, I'm probably gonna look into SRM stuff more when I'm done with school. Like, I've been sort of not looking. I mean, I've been like watching how it develops, but I haven't been doing a lot of research on it because it's like I know it's something that if I get into, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on. But I am going on like a trip pretty soon after I finish my finals. But yeah, I'll be back around Christmas time. I'll probably do a couple of streams between now and when I leave, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to see some family. So actually. Ganondorf is a big bro here, and he actually full restores your health and magic before the fight. Or I guess maybe Navi does that, but I don't know. If she can do that, then she should definitely do that more often. Alright, so here we're gonna walk over here and look down so it lags less. Here we're gonna get ISG. ISG is a bit complicated there, or at least it's not technically harder than normal, but it's a different timing because this area lags a lot. So if we're just like crouch stabbing or like using ISG to like hit be hitting him like the first frame that he's available to be hit, like he's not able to like go back up and like keep you from killing him. So you just like one cycle him. It's technically the same thing we did with Bongo earlier in the run. And well like Twin Rover actually isn't like that. Because we just like kill her fast enough that she just dies. Yeah, it sort of looks like you're gonna jump slosh off there, but it's not that close. And now it's time for Ganon. So this is the part with like a little bit of RNG with rocks. Well, I like do another ledge clip here, like the one I did in Forest to get through the block. But then I'm going to get hit by a bomb and void out as I enter a loading zone, which does some weird stuff. It puts you through the loading zone, but it puts you at the coordinates of like where you would have spawned when you void out. So like when you void out, you respawn here at the top of the tower or whatever. But I'm going to go inside in like into the inside of the tower area, but with the coordinates of the top of the tower. And then I'm going to like basically jump down to where the end of the tower is and just like hit the loading zone to go to the next area. But I need to like hang on the ledge for a second while like a bomb ticks. And if I get hit by a rock then... Oh, that rock came close. This is kind of one part that's pretty sketch. If I messed up this, I would hit the loading zone and I'd double load one of these areas and the game would crash. And then if I hadn't done that save that I was talking about earlier, then I'd have to watch later or cut again. Because I would just have to like go for my last save which would have been going from fourth. Ah, I didn't get the kiss. You can get it so like where they line up and then like Zelda just like pushes you into the loading zone and it kind of looks like they're kissing. I shoot a light arrow there because I think it like reduces a little bit of lag because it like keeps like Zelda has like a purple animation or whatever when she like raises the door. But like when you shoot a light arrow, like kind of overrides that. Yeah. So with the like tennis you play with Ganondorf, like if you're that close and you swing it, 
Like, almost all the time, you'll just hit him the first try. It's actually kind of weird, because, like, sometimes he'll, like, keep reflecting it back. And we're not quite sure why, but we assume it's, like, something to do with how he's flying around or something like that. It's kind of a speculation. But that's a, one thing we're not really sure about. But sometimes you, he'll just, like, even when you're really close, he'll just, like, hit it five or six times. And it looks really weird, because the light ball will, like, go through him, and then it'll, like, hit it from behind him, like, after it's gone through him. <laughs> So here we're going to super slide in this cutscene and like keep holding R. Well, which is like, it's kind of due to the state that super slide puts you in, but it kind of messes up this cutscene a lot and it keeps Ganon from knocking out your sword, which seems weird, but just because like, I guess it can't play the animation. Oh, I should uh, not talk to Zelda. Her target range is really big. Wow, ah, okay. Well, maybe I'm... I can try to do a one bomb super slide. But maybe I'm just walking. Alright. This is not too bad. I can just hook shot his tail. So I was trying to keep this sword, but now he's gonna knock it away. So like, in this first stage of the fight, we're not gonna be able to keep the sword, which is what I wanted to do. But he has like 10 HP, and like, all your normal items do one damage to him, but like the sword still does four, so you can like kill him really quickly through the phase if you still have the sword. But because we messed up the super sliding in the cutscene, I'm just gonna have to hook shot his tail ten times. Which will look really weird and stupid. But especially on N64 where the game runs at like fifteen frames a second here. Great battle, battle with the Ganon. Krillink kept rolling under him and then hook shotting him in the tail. So I guess you're supposed to use like many different items or whatever. But it's like they all do the same damage and hook shots just the most convenient to use. If I was on BC, I could use the sticks here with a quick swap, but that would crash on N64. Yeah. The legendary hookshot weapon. So now we get the sword back. The end's a little bit faster in this phase. I think he moves a bit quicker. I didn't wait long enough, so he like wasn't correctly facing the tail. I don't think I'm facing the right way. I'm playing this pretty safe. I would normally play this cutscene way riskier if I was like actually doing a run. But I don't want to die and like have to redo Void Warp. Especially because I don't have any bombs, so I just have to go down to the thing normally. Alright, there we go. It's almost time for time. Yeah, if you want to follow me, it's just like twitch.tv slash rosewater. I'm doing runs of this category pretty regularly, though I've been kind of on a break lately because of finals. Alright, that time. And then I don't know, I think we might be running a little bit behind, so I don't know if we want to watch the full credits, but... Give me one second, I will check this schedule. That was a 129.23, by the way. 
129, 23. Yep. Well, I mean, in, I think my estimate was like 127, not including the credits. 136, that actually. Yeah, it was 136, but that's including the credits, which are nine minutes long. Right. So cross code. I mean, I already said this. Cross code um, is dropping out because Loa has family issues. We're moving left at Child of Eden up, and that is supposed to start at twenty one on the hour, which is in seventeen minutes. From now. how long do these credits take? I think we have time. All right. Well, I think we actually have time for credits. Pog. So you can like do like all your like shoutouts doing credits, plug the, all the discords. Yeah, I assume there's at least like multiple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's several. There's like random OT squares, yeah. but the main one is just like this. You run Discord. I can actually link it. Why not? It's kind of like where we all do our hanging out and stuff and talk about random OT things. I can link. This. Oh, I think that looks messed up. There you go. I put like a dash thing on it. Yeah. Ganon's like yelling curse you, I think, or something like that in the English version. Curse you, potato. Curse you. And then we get sent to MM, basically. That's how the timeline works. Confirmed. You know, this would be the time where I'd uh, say, you know, there's uh, an incentive coming up for the run afterwards, but that was already mad. <laughs> it was already mad. Because mm. since we're moving Child of Eden up, uh, I would be talking about the uh, Play for Connect incentive, but that was already mad due to the gracious donations. So. <laughs> yeah, actually. The way we order the marathon doesn't make sense timeline wise because Wind Waker is technically after OT, but it's like the timeline where you fail the whole world and then scheduling. it gets flooded. <laughs> yeah, scheduling is. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I know it's hard to like schedule stuff and uh... whether or not it's timeline doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, you got to have that continuity, man. Let's just say scheduling is a bit... Yeah. That's I all mean, I'm gonna say. <laughs> the timeline doesn't make sense anyway, so... I don't know if it really matters. <laughs> OT lore, Kappa. Yeah, the Discord is a nice place just to like hang out and ask questions if you have any. Um, and then, yeah, I'm probably going to stream tomorrow, but I do have like one more final, but it's like an easy class. So <sighs> you always have like the hard classes, then you have the easy classes. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. We'll follow the runner. <laughs> But it's, it, uh, it's always very, very nice when you actually, during a marathon, you have time to watch the OT credits because they're just... How do you say this? Like, you have to consider this game was like... You know, it's been like... It's pretty monumental. It's like... Isn't one it like of the first didn't it become 20 years adventure. old this year? Yeah, it's 21 years old this year. It's... I'm 21, like, right? Like yeah. Around a month older than me, yeah. and I just turned 21 in December. Yeah. So like this, like when you can like consider that like they made like all this this giant game of like probably like just let's be real, probably like 50, 60 hours of casual content back then on a platform that has less processing power than probably one core of the machine that's currently restreaming this marathon. <laughs> You start to consider that, like, back in the days, game development was just more of an art form. And just the credits of OT just very much reflect that. Yeah, it's insane that, like, because this is, like, one of the... I mean, it's not technically one of the first 3D adventure games, but it's, like, 
I mean, there's obviously like some one of the first, like, one of the first, but it's like one of the first, like that actually resembles modern 3D adventure games. Like a lot of the other ones are like weird, like PC things that are like, like either like point and click adventures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This was like more like a game you would play today, but it's like 21 years old. This game basically is pretty defined, crazy. This game basically defined the 3D RPG like speed runs forever when you consider it. Yeah. And the credits are emotional and nostalgic, so. I'm actually gonna get the game audio up here because I can't. Water Temple Games is the hardest time. Yeah, I feel like it's like the amount of time that a lot of people spent casually when the game came out is probably more than like 50 or 60 hours. Because it's like, there's a lot of like, you just need to like kind of explore and know where to go. It's like the, a lot of the older games were like that, but it's not like they tell you where which temple you're supposed to do next and things like that. Well, I think Navi does, maybe. But who listens to Navi anyway? <laughs> yeah, we only listen to Way of the Hero. Do you play Randomizer? I'm curious. Play what? Random Randomizer. Randomizer? No. Because I'd have, you know, <laughs> slower, like, every, like, second day slower runs randomizers. Yeah. Randomizer it's getting, is like... It's getting to the point where slower, like... I've restreamed a lot of OOT. But believe it or not, believe it or not, I'm one of those people who actually didn't play it as a child. I, 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 I know. <gasps> yes. <laughs> but slower is like trying to like convince me to like pick up random, like in the game in general, like start speedrunning it, pick up randomizer. He wants me to start speedrunning OOT by by randomize by playing randomizers, which I don't know if that's a good plan, but. <laughs> I mean, we'll see, maybe, maybe one day. It depends on what you enjoy doing. I guess sure. Randomizer doesn't really appeal to me, because it's kind of like... It's like sort of the appeal of like a card game, which is like, I'll play card games every once in a while, yeah. but it's like... It's sort of like you're mixing like a bunch of execution with like a ton of randomness, and it's like... Yeah. I mean, like, in general, I didn't actually beat OT as a kid. I think I ended up getting, like, stopping around, like, Forest Temple, like, once I became adult. But I was like four or five when I played it first, so. If you didn't get any help, that's probably a, that's probably further than most kids came. I think I had, like, a printed game guide or whatever, but, you know. When you're four or five, you have a hard time even following that. I know that for Mario, I, like, Mario 64 particular as a child, I came to, like, I think I got stuck on what they would now consider tippy. Could never get 70 feels bad, man. But GG, what a run. Thank you. Thank you so much for running. Yeah. It was a bit tight for me because it's like I got finals all around here, but it's it was nice I'll to do down. it. All work down. And the run turned out well, even though I haven't like I, I only like played OT today and I played it in like two weeks or something. <laughs> but I did like four or five hours of practice earlier today. So this is like the point where like everybody argues where the timeline actually splits. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like low rise. I mean I think if you beat the game it goes to MM. Right. If you don't right. beat the game it goes to Wind Waker. Right. And then like the timeline gets even more weird after that. Because like the Next games that come out are like prequel. And I don't even remember where Breath of the Wild sits in there. I think Breath of the Wild is also a prequel. I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna have Left Side Worldwide do Child of Eden. Yeah, and we're almost at the end. I know. Screen. I know. We ended a marathon on this. Was quite emotional. And then it actually the run stream crashed in the credits, so feels bad. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, VC runs of this game are kind of interesting because the game can just kind of randomly crash due to like the VC, like VC, like sort of over time, like leaks memory a little bit or not like leaks, but it gets like weirdly formatted in a way that eventually it runs out of memory. And it sort of just is random when it happens. Also, an interesting thing is like this looks the end screen is different on like 1.0 yeah. versus 1.2. Yeah. There's also a glitch where I believe if you run web to the end as adult, like Link will be in this credit as adult, which is like this <laughs> a monk at US. Yeah, I think certain wrong works yeah. you may yeah. end up as adult. But it's... that's it. Thank you for running. And as usual, runners have the last word. All right. Well. Check out my stream if you want to. I hope you all enjoy the next run. See ya.